This time on Sewing with Nancy, we begin right where we left off after the first program of Handbags 2, Designer Knockoffs. Eileen Roche returns with her unique approach to creating handbags using an embroidery machine to make a bag look professionally produced. Eileen, over the years, you've changed my mind about machine embroidery. It's both fashionable, plus it has function. It has changed through the years. During our first show of this series, we detailed how to embroider accents and placement for grommets, and how corners of the bags are easily transformed with the help of embroidery. Now, it's time to put the bags together with more designer tips and techniques. Handbags too, designer knockoffs. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During the first program of Handbags 2 Designer Knockoffs, we did some of the functional plus the pretty embroidery. And the pretty embroidery not only decorates the bag, but it adds the grommet placement for the straps, and it also handles the tricky corners of the bag. That's the difficult part, I think, of making a handbag. And then we showed you how to attach the lining, and now it's time to talk about straps. And if you are wondering what we did in the first program, you can go to nancyzeman.com and watch the first part of the program or watch it on DVD. But the straps are next easy but you need some straps with substance. So we've used a strap interfacing, perforated, cut a two inch strip of fabric, fuse the perforated interfacing on it, and then press along the perforations, as we've done on this sample, and you have these raw edges. So I lean one way to do it, to finish it, is to work with grow grain ribbon. Grogre ribbon is excellent because the edges are already finished and you mm -hmm. just top stitch it down right in place. The bag that Eileen just showed you has comparable fabric for trim and we used a three-fourths of an inch bias tape maker, cut a one and a half inch width of fabric, thread it through the opening and then as it comes out you catch it with the tip of your iron to press the double fold or the fold to the center. And as you might guess, then you just overlay and top stitch. That's all there is to it. You do have to make those straps eight inches longer than a regular bag because it has to loop through the grommet. So as long as you remember that tip, you're in good shape. Exactly, and everything is written in the book that accompanies the program, plus of course the embroidery designs. Mm -hmm. Then there's another functional designer tip, and that is the zipper closure. Sometimes a snap is not really secure enough to finish off the top of a bag. So Nancy developed this great technique on adding a facing to the zipper tape itself. And that facing lets the zipper kind of nestle down into mm -hmm. the bag, staying out of harm's way. Now you could add this to a bag that you have. You don't have to embroider it. So this is a technique that you can add to any tote of bag. And the width of that bag is important. It's 15 inches wide finished. So you're going to cut two facings four inches narrower than the width of the bag, no matter what size bag you have. And this is 11 by four. And then I've added some fusible interfacing. I just made it about three inches. Then you fold it in half, meeting the short ends, or meeting the long ends, folding it in half at the short ends. And sew just a fourth of an inch seam at each corner. And you're going to do this on both of the facing pieces, and then turn it right side out. That's what I have here. I have a folded edge and a raw edge. The zipper, since you want it longer than your bag op width, and I made this one about, this is about a 16 inch zipper, and I just would fold under the extra zipper tape that I have here, and then I'm going to put this down on the table and align the folded edge to the, next to the zipper teeth. And and you might can see on one side I've top stitched it down. The lower section has been top stitched. At the end, 
I have a little sleeve that I'm going to add. I had an 18 inch zipper, I'm gonna shorten it. Eileen, let's show our guests what we have on this end. We have a little extra sleeve, little extra tab. Looks just kinda of nice. I, you can figure out how to do that. Then the top needs some binding. And you can use your favorite technique of binding. Uh, we have binding started in this area. On my sample that only has one half finished, I'm just going to show you what you do. The raw edges are met to the raw edges of the bag and pinned. And then we have the binding partially started on this side. Mm -hmm. And then I would just wrap. We'll stick. You baste it together first, right. the facing, and then wrap this around and top stitch or hand stitch. And Eileen, as we look at the finished bag, you can see again that that's nestled inside. And you have a closure that has an extra tail and keeps your contents safe. Who wouldn't love to carry one of these feminine clutches, big enough to fit a cell phone, small wallet, and tissues? If you have a large embroidery hoop, let the machine do all the pattern making for you. If not, you can easily stitch the design and then use a template to create the bag shape. What a great idea. You take a close up look at this great clutch. You see the pretty part on the outside, which we'll get to next, a little ribbon detail, but inside has equal interest. You can add a, a label, you can add a monogram, and the beauty of it is, is that the shape of the pattern is also an embroidery. And that's what I have on my screen right now. You can see, a, you can see on the screen that I have the embroidery design, and it's two outlines with a few little notches. And as I stitch this, I'm just stitching on a hoop fabric, some lining fabric. You can add interfacing or stabilizer if you'd like, and it sh stitches the shapes fast and easy. You can make your fabric a little bit larger so that you can get two in one area, rehooping and to stitch another one. As this is going around, I'm going to show you one that has already been stitched, and it has been stitched with a little bit more than an outline, but right now, pay attention to the outlines and the notches. Oh, the notches are right into the embroidery. Now the pretty part, the label, is what is going to happen next. And Eileen, this is where you shine. I'm going to stop this. almost stitched one whole outline, and you're going to do the personalization. I've imported my label design, which is included in this collection, and I went into the built-in alphabet, alphabet on the machine and added NZ in lowercase because it's kind of a fun and trendy style right now. I'll move that monogram over into the label itself. I need to rotate it, and then I'll scooch it right underneath those pretty little flowers. I want to make sure that it's within that satin frame. And now I'll touch sewing. Since I've already stitched my outline, I can advance through the design so that I am at the placement guide for the label. So I'll go ahead and stitch that, and next I'll add my applique fabric. It's really nice that we have a placement line so we know where to put the applique. Okay. So I've guessed in the past. And the beautiful part about this clutch outline is, you know, the outside line is where you cut it out, and the inside line is where you actually stitch the, the uh, lining together. So all of the hard work is done for you. You don't even have to measure. So we'll let this tack down, and then after that, um, I'll remove the hoop from the machine and trim that excess applique fabric out of harm's way and we can watch it stitch the pretty design. Now whenever you're trimming applique, it's best to have the scissors right against the um, top stitch thread. And you know, you do wanna get close, you wanna hold that applique fabric. It's much easier to do this on a flat surface, maybe away from the sewing foot. <laughs> it's a little hard to get in here, but I think our yeah. viewers get the uh, overall picture. And you beveled your scissors, you la laid mm -hmm. it flat. And then after you do the trimming, you just let it do the stitches. Now, you may want to change threads. You're just going to kind of do it one, one color right now. Right. But it shows you the idea. And often in applique, we add an interfacing to the back. But this time, this is an area that's not going to get a lot of use. You know, sure. it doesn't need that extra security. This would be a great gift for 
prom, for bridesmaids, for bridal wear. Right. Oh, not bridal wear, but for a wedding can, party. Yeah. And it can stitch very quickly. If you add the lace on the outer clutch, it takes a little bit more time, but decorative fabric works too. So as this is stitching, I'm just going to show you again what we have. And Eileen is stitching around the outer edges of the label. She then changed threads to do the remaining few stitches. And you have a pretty lining. So you're going to cut out along the outer edge of a second sheet, as, a second embroidery as well. And then the lining will be prepared. The next part is to stitch the bag. We're going to stitch an outline again and then the pretty part, the lace design, and Eileen will show you how to add the ribbon. Eileen took time to reset her sewing machine, load fabric for the stitching of the outer clutch. And Eileen, the outer clutch and the lining have a commonality. And that's the, the, out, the outline that is stitched twice. One is the cut line and the inside line is where you'll actually sew the clutch together. But right now, I am at color number two, which is the beautiful lace. And it does take quite a bit of time to stitch. It's 29 minutes worth every stitch. But we're gonna go ahead and start it. And then when we come back, we'll show our viewers how to add the ribbon in the center. And it's a design element right in the embroidery design. Now, as this is stitching, we've, we're working with a linen fabric, almost a pro free weight linen fabric. And in the first program, we detailed the type of fabrics and you don't have a stabilizer underneath this. Well, I do have a stabilizer. I have a poly mesh cutaway there stabilizer. You go. Because the lace is, you know, it's heavy, it's stitch intensive. So you're gonna need to stabilize that fabric. Um, you don't have to add the lace. You could just use a decorative quilting fabric and then mm -hmm. consider adding a, an interfacing to that maybe or even batting, a lightweight batting. So it will stitch and stitch. And since our show is only a half an hour show, mm -hmm. we are going to let the machine stitch. And when we come back, it'll be nearing the end of this pretty lace pattern. My design is just about stitched, the lace part, which is so beautiful. And our next color is going to be the outline of that ribbon placement guide. And off we go. So you have function and you have a pretty stitch all in one. That's what I love about embroidery. You know, the preciseness of the digital file ensures that you're going to get consistent and perfect results every single time, which is something I can't do with the sewing machine, Nancy. <laughs> I know you can, but I sure can't. Oh, not necessarily. So once that's tied off, I can place this ribbon right in that outline. You want to make sure that it's centered. And you'll notice I have tape that's uh, over the ribbon holding it down. And, you know, again, this is something that you might want to do. Take the hoop off the machine so you can stand up over it and get a really good look. And that's just office tape. It is. And you can stitch right through it and then we'll just tear it off. It, you know, you want to make sure that you get the end of the tape away from the presser foot because if it's not down securely, you could catch it and then that can make a bit of a mess. But, you know, stitching through it is not a problem at all. And also, you have the tape longer than the bag outline. I do, almost. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out right now. Oh, I just made it. Lucky for me. And, and the ribbon is longer, too, so that mm -hmm. you can have a handle on it. So now it's just... Mm -hmm. Packing it down, which is kind of fun to watch. And then later on, when you actually sew the clutch together, it keeps that ribbon long because you do want to capture it in the uh, seam allowance of the clutch itself. So now we'll just do a decorative stitch down the middle. It's like a small, tiny uh, French knot or a polka dot, if you will. And it just adds a really pretty decorative element. Yeah, it has. you have a lot of dots in the lace mm -hmm. design. So it's just a, a, a great design to complete, but it's also enjoyable <laughs> to watch. It is. And you know, Nancy, this is such a great gift idea. I know many people on my gift list will probably be getting these little clutch bags. Well, you, you probably noticed earlier that the clutch had NZ on it. That was a gift from Eileen to me. And if you don't have a, bone, a, a large jumbo hoop, you could also just stitch the embroidery. It's a file like this of just the pretty part and the design. This is what's stitching right now in Eileen's hoop. 
and then there's a template so that you can trace this out as or trace around this to get it centered. You can see that little notch, you'd line it up with the ribbon and it would just be traced and cut. So after we watch the stitch and do the final stitching, you will find out that how we're going to assemble the lining and the outer clutch and insert it into the frame so you can give it away as a gift. Now it's time to do a little cutting. You've stitched two linings, two outer clutches, and you have a cutting line and a sewing line. And you can see, simply cut on the outer line. And you'll do that for the front and the back mm -hmm. and the lining. Now it's time to sew the lining together. We'll start with that. Yeah, yes, the lining has, and all pattern pieces in this instance, have little notches stitched right into the embroidery. And you're going to stitch just this lower seam. Just a, It's just about a little over an inch, inch and a half long. If you'd like, you can put a dowel in here and do a little finger pressing, or you can use the tip of your iron and press that little seam, great way to get into tiny corners. And this clutch is going to be turned right side out and you'll need an opening. And Eileen, mm -hmm. you designed it to happen here. It has two notches on the lining pattern, the lining design. One here and one so, here. And you don't stitch between those two notches. So you stitch from the corner to the notch. Then stack the seams. Stack the side seam and the lower seam, one on top of the other. And you'll stitch across the corner. And when you do that, presto, we have it here, you get a perfect boxed out seam. Nancy, I, we used the black thread here so that yes. you clearly it would be viewable um, on television, but at home you may want to use the same color thread. And then you do the same for your beautiful outside bag, same boxed out corners, but you have a closed lower edge. That's right. Now, even though I haven't stitched that one seam, make believe I did. <laughs> and you tuck one inside of the other. Right sides together. And you'd sew along the top, top, and then for those of you who are sewing with Nancy viewers, you know I like to do wrap corners. You can wrap the corner and sew down to the point, down to the point. And this is what has happened on this little sample. It's been sewn all the way around the edges. The wrap corner makes it just a little bit easier to right side the whole clutch. It's so rewarding when you turn yeah. it right side out, yeah. it kind of blooms, it's just beautiful. And you know what, while I work on this, why don't you show the viewers what it looks like when... Once it's turned, turned you'll mm -hmm. press all edges and then top stitch or edge stitch right along the edge because you're going to insert that into this metal frame. And the metal frame is fairly narrow, so you have to press that fabric down. I like to clip and hold back part of half of, well, I guess half of the clutch. And then I will get some glue and I use a fabric glue, a permanent fabric glue, and I run a bead inside the frame, the whole length of the frame. And then lay it on a flat surface, and then we just slide that top into the frame itself. Now, you need a little, this takes a little wiggling around, but when the glue is in there, it actually grips the fabric and makes it really s simple to do. So Nancy, I'll work on this while yeah. you tell them about the masterpiece that follows. Sure, and we're not really using glue as you might surmise, but because we're on an angled table, just follow the directions and it works out very mm -hmm. well. During this two-part series, we showed you two handbags. In the beginning, we did a little creative construction of designer techniques of putting it together and also the clutch, but then the master's program, which you'll find in the book that accompanies the program, is to add a scalloped edge pocket along the edge. It's, mm -hmm. it's stunning. It has some of the same mm -hmm. elements as the beautiful clutch does. You can see the same design, only this time put in a different mm -hmm. manner. And it's a great way of incorporating function and fashion in bags using an embroidery machine. Eileen, it's always a pleasure to have you on Sewing with Nancy. I love coming here every time, Nancy. Thanks for having me. And I hope that you will enjoy making designer knockout handbags.
Known as the Zipper Lady, our Nancy's Corner guest was recently acknowledged by the volunteer organization Clothes for Kids for a dedication to keeping children warm during the winter. Replacing zippers in coats is no easy task, and I was inspired by the story. I know you will be too. I'd like you to welcome Mary Kolb, who is the Zipper Lady. Mary, when I read your story and that you have repaired hundreds of zippers, I knew you had to be a guest on Sewing with Nancy. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And tell me when you started to repair zippers. In the year 2000. And since then, the number is pretty astounding. Tell yeah, me, tell the viewers. There's been, I have done it in 1,300 coats for clothes for kids. You, that's that's remarkable. 1,300 coats. You kept kids warm. Cut jackets out of landfills, and I, I admire your dedication. Thank you. And what we thought we'd do is share with you some of Mary's tips because we're not going to replace the whole zipper. Sometimes you do that, right? But sometimes it's just as easy as replacing the glider, right? Many times it's it, people will say, that "I need a new zipper," and they don't really need a new zipper. They need to save their parts, and it can maybe be fixed much easier that way. And that's a key, save the parts. Save the parts. Because in this zipper, it came, this coat came to you without the zipper glider. Right. So we will, even though we're not working on a hard surface, we'll kind of show you what Mary did. And Mary, mm -hmm. I'm, you have your nice little pad that you made. Really, <laughs> You put it on your table. Right. And then, let's do this side. And then you've got your tackle box full of supplies and... Mm -hmm. You did a little chiseling. Right. I break this uh, top stop mm -hmm. on that side. And be sure you always do it on the female side where the okay. uh, gl uh, glider inserts is going to go. And, and you just, just kind of chiseled off. that off. Right. Pull it off with the pliers. And then I happen to have, I order my supplies from a company and put on the new glider. This takes just a few minutes. We're just going to get it started at the top. Mm -hmm. We practice this. I know it works. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and presto. Mm -hmm. But as Mary is zipping it, I want to show you that we all, she also in her tackle box has all kinds of stops. Right. And then I have, I can't add a, a plastic top, but I will sure. have a metal one. And, and uh, then the coat is fixed. And a good lesson to all of us is that when you get a coat in and it has the parts mm -hmm. and it has a little accessory on it, what do you do with that? I remove that <laughs> because I feel it pulls the glider apart. Uh -huh. And if you notice on this one, uh -huh. um, and I'll hold it for you. It. This has been pulled apart, and people will come and say that um, my zipper's broke. No, you simply pull that apart, and you can, as a Band-Aid to have the coat for the day or whatever, just close this like about a 32nd of an inch, very little, because you don't want to break that mechanism sure. off inside. And uh, that needs to be, there's a little prong in there, needs uh -huh. to be closed a little so that the zipper teeth can... Sure. Um, Close. Close. And if that's too wide, and people say, well, it opens from the bottom. Well, that's why it opens uh -huh. from the bottom. And, and we've all if, had that. If I had that on a metal uh -huh. zipper now and closed like that, it would be fine. But I, what I try to teach people to do is, and should we do it on this coat? Sure, sure. Um, when you're trying to teach the children, when they're closing their coat, to run their thumbnail up this way. So you're putting the pressure on the top or down like this, not out like this. And of course, when they have that extra decoration on there, uh -huh. you're so apt to pull sure. like that, and you're pulling this bottom apart. And that's why it doesn't. So Mary's hint is to grasp the tab mm -hmm. and pull upward or push downward. downward but okay. don't pull straight out. And you may have a metal zipper and then you have replaced or taken off that. We have some kind of ma your makeshift pliers. You put a felt section in there. Right. So that you could easily remove the... Yeah, for pulling these top stops the, off. The top stop off. So what a great hint. Now, we're not going to go through replacing a zipper, but this, this happens to everyone. And right. boy, what a great way that you have 
honored children mm -hmm. by fixing their coats. Right. And thank you for keep, for being with us and keep up a hundred coats a year. <laughs> I will try. Well, thank you, Mary. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this program that I've done with Mary, as well as Eileen Roche on Handbags 2, Designer Knockoffs. All Things Sewing with Nancy you can find at our website, nancyzeman.com. Watch 52 shows, find out about our Nancy's Corner guests, and most of all, thank you for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy and Eileen Roche have written a book entitled Handbags 2 Designer Knockoffs that includes the instructions, designer techniques, and a CD including embroideries for the bags featured in this two-part series. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2716. Order item number BK2716, Handbags 2, Designer Knockoffs. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy. TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.